A night out for drinks turns into gunfire for a couple of men on the east side of town, what authorities say led up to that shooting, and the latest on the victim's condition. And First Lady Jill Biden arriving in San Antonio today to promote two White House initiatives. We'll tell you more about her plans as she visits the Alamo City. Both of them hit each other. Saw so one of the rotor blades go flying. Black Hawk down, an eyewitness recalls the moments uh, during a ski trip he's turned into a rescue mission. That story ahead in your morning headlines. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. It's Wednesday, February 23rd. Hey, thanks for joining us and already 38 degrees. So when we <sighs> left our houses this morning, it was like in the 50s. It was in the 50s. During and, I mean, the newscast, it was in the 40s. And it was breezy. We knew yeah. it was going to get colder, but come on. I know it <laughs> seems a little much right now, but let's go ahead and look outside with live cam. Uh, yeah, and it's definitely cold out there and it's just dropping. It's gray and uh, during newscast, between newscasts rather, Justin was uh, sharing some wind chills from other parts of the state. Ouch. Yeah, down into the negative number, negative 16 in Amarillo at last check. Just to give you an idea. The temperature is falling again, by the way. We're down to 37 now. We're going to fall quickly today. I mean, we're going to be in the low 30s, I think, by the afternoon. Let's look at the numbers right now. 32 in Boulevardy. It is now below freezing in places like Kerrville. 30 degrees here. 30 in Las Maples. 42 stints in 37 Randolph. And as we zoom out some, you can see most of the hill country, yes, is sub freezing behind this cold front. What a change. And you may be asking, well, what about freezing drizzle if we're going to get precipitation today? It is possible in the hill country. I'll say that, but we think impacts today will be minimal. The roads are still really warm from yesterday's warm temperatures, but things like signs, tree branches, yes, they could collect a little bit of ice from time to time. Wind chill values down to 17 in Fredericksburg, 18 in Kerrville. Feels like 27 now here in San Antonio with winds gusting to about 25 miles per hour. And as we look at the radar, there is some drizzle out there. None of this is heavy. It's very, very light, but it's going to make for sort of a damp day. We'll see this off and on drizzle. And then in the hill country, yes, I think we do see a little bit of freezing drizzle throughout the day and even into the afternoon and tonight. So here's what to expect. Uh, Cloudy, cold, drizzly today, and then some light freezing drizzle even here in San Antonio. I think tonight it's possible, but the impacts will remain minimal. Thursday stays cold. Drizzle is coming to an end on Thursday, but we're still going to see some cold temperatures even going into the weekend. So forecast today, those temperatures slip into the mid to low 30s by this afternoon and this evening, and those wind chills stay in the 20s. Guys, Stephen, want to check in with you. Uh, have you heard anything about potentially treating roads? Literally just moments ago, Justin. Uh, in fact, Sarah Spivey on her way into work had given me a call saying that Techstar crews were already out there. Just got an email from Techstar. They are out pre-treating the roadways from between I-10, 1604. So same spots as the last time. We'll get more of a specific location and get you all posted on that. But right now, check out these droplets here at 1604 at Hausman. Uh, not a lot of traffic out there, but make sure that you are taking it slow. As Justin mentioned, the roads uh, should be okay because it was warm yesterday, but you are going to see crews out there pre-treating a lot of these areas with brine. So make sure you are driving carefully and give them plenty of space. Now, as for now, traffic looks like it is picking up uh, and actually a lot of these issues are quickly improving really quick here. This crash has been there throughout the morning. 35 northbound at Division Avenue looks like it's cleared out and traffic is moving through there easily. 35 northbound at AT&T Center Parkway. Same thing and we're seeing some progress there at 410 eastbound at US 281, but a slight slowdown still. No big delays if you're traveling into San Antonio, but just remember to drive carefully. You are going to see tech stock crews out there. We're going to keep you posted and have all those updates throughout the day. Mark Stephanie. Steven, thank you for the update. And let's look at today's nine at nine. President Joe Biden says Russia will pay for their decision to start invading Ukraine. Multiple sanctions are set to go into place, including cutting off Russia from all Western finance and halting the newly built Nord Stream 2 pipeline that transports natural gas from Russia to Germany. Biden says additional sanctions will be put in place if Russia moves further into Ukraine. A series of trucker protest convoys are headed for the nation's capital. It's unclear whether the protests will bring the kind of chaos that paralyzed the Canadian capital of Ottawa for three weeks. The group is protesting vaccine mandates and pandemic-related restrictions. The Pentagon has authorized over 700 National Guard troops to be deployed if needed. The convoy is starting in California this morning and expected to make it to the capital by early March. 
19 Austin police officers have been indicted for their actions during the 2020 George Floyd protests and riots in Texas. The officers each faced two counts of aggravated assault by a public servant. If convicted, they could face five to 99 years or life in prison and a potential fine of up to $10,000. Austin's police chief says he stands by the officers and believes their conduct did not rise to the level of a criminal violation. It's the final stage of the federal trial for three former Minneapolis police officers charged with violating George Floyd's civil rights. In closing arguments, prosecutors argued that all three officers knew what they were doing was wrong, but the defense says they were simply inexperienced. All three ex-officers have pleaded not guilty. They're facing fines and up to life in prison if convicted. The Federal Trade Commission says Americans lost nearly $6 billion to fraud in 2021. That's an increase of more than 70% over the previous year. The most commonly reported category was imposter scams, followed by online shopping scams. A new study shows gun deaths in the U.S. have overtaken car crashes in terms of how many years of life were lost. The research found that in 2017 alone, there were 1,000,044 years of potential life lost due to gun deaths. That same year, car crashes caused a loss of 1,000,037 years of potential life. Calculations broadly based on the average U.S. life expectancy of 80 years. The Wendy Williams Show will come to an end in June after 14 seasons. Former co-host of The View, Sherry Shepard, will launch her talk show in the same daytime slot. Sources say Williams made the decision to cancel her show due to ongoing health issues. The Biden administration trying to give a charge to the electric car industry, a Nevada company getting a $35 million federal investment to help boost mining of rare earth metals critical to electric car production. An alcoholic version of Mountain Dew is now available in several states. The 100-calorie spiked seltzer is 5% alcohol. Hard Mountain Dew comes in four flavors. That is Baja Blast, Watermelon, Black Cherry, and Original. It's available in Tennessee, Florida, and Iowa, with plans to expand to more states later this year. And that's today's 9 at 9. And in just a few hours, First Lady Jill Biden is expected to arrive in San Antonio to promote a pair of White House initiatives. She is expected to tour a cancer center and a child development center today. R.J. Marquez is live in the KSAT 12 newsroom with more on that. Good morning, R.J. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. So the First Lady is scheduled to arrive after 11 this morning at Joint Base San Antonio Cali Field and has a full schedule in the Alamo City today. She's expected to be in San Antonio for about five hours. So after she lands at Cali Field, Biden will head to the Mays Cancer Center. That is the home to UT Health San Antonio MD Anderson. She's expected to tour the facility and take part in a listening session that focuses on cancer and health disparities in Latino communities. So back in 2016, the Bidens launched the Cancer Moonshot Initiative to accelerate scientific discovery in cancer, create more collaboration, and improve how that data is shared. And earlier this month, President Biden announced another goal that included reducing the death rate from cancer by at least 50 percent over the next 25 years. The First Lady is then scheduled to tour Joint Base San Antonio's Lackland's Child Development Center. She will participate in a listening session there about supporting military children with disabilities, and this is another initiative from the White House. She will then leave San Antonio around 4.30 this afternoon. And guys, her last visit to San Antonio was back in April 5, 2019, when she delivered remarks at a Junior League event, which was called Unstoppable Passion for a Purpose. And that was a luncheon that took place back in 2019. So we have two crews covering the First Lady's visit today, and we'll of course have all the details throughout the day on air and online at ksat.com. Make sure to follow us for that latest coverage. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, RJ. When your other morning headlines, the White House trying to uh, trying another way rather to ease supply chain issues, and an eyewitness describes that Black Hawk helicopter incident near a ski resort in Utah. And getting paid to stay off social media and hogs and dogs. David Sears is here to explain all of this this morning. Hogs and dogs. Okay. Not a real hog, but real dogs. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Cue on that for a second. We'll get to it in just a second. While there is still a backlog of ships trying to unload their cargo, the Biden administration trying to do something that will help ease the supply chain problem. It is a $450 million grant. A White House official says that money will be used to support the expansion of capacity, among other improvements, for getting imports and exports in and out. The hope is that the money will also help get products from the ships to the shelves faster and get prices down. However, 
Those grants won't be awarded until later this year. And this is some pretty terrifying video. We are back in Utah, Black Hawk helicopter trying at a training area near a ski resort. Two helicopters collided and went down in a cloud of snow. You can see one of the choppers just completely disappears. And then there goes a rotor blade from another helicopter. According to the Utah National Guard, this was a standard training exercise on U.S. Forest Service land, and it was just outside the boundaries of that ski resort. There were plenty of terrified skiers and eyewitnesses. And I saw the choppers coming in, and it, to be honest, it looked pretty kind of weird from the start, thinking you know, it's unusual following so close together. And, and then I got my phone out. I was like, oh, get the landing, and then... Yeah, we just heard this big bang. Did both of them hit each other? Saw one of the rotor blades go flying. According to reports, eight men and women crew members, four on each helicopter. There were no serious injuries. The investigation into the cause is underway. And there are all those weird social media trends. How about this one as a possible trend? Paying your kids to stay off social media. Lorna Klesos and her mom, Sievert is her son, they live in Minnesota. Her three daughters were pretty much entrenched in social media, and Lorna heard about another mom doing something similar. So she told her son if he stayed off of social media for six years, she would give him $1,800 when he turned 18. Being 12, I didn't really have a great concept of money yet. So I was like, oh, sick. Yeah, absolutely. I've had it now just kind of in my savings for probably six months because I knew at that point I knew for sure he was going to make it. How many, uh, how many 12 year olds are on social media? A lot? I don't, I don't know. So uh, probably now, yes. He started at 12, but wow. Siebert says he wasn't really into social media all that much anyway. However, now that he has all that money, the first thing to download was Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> he plans to use the money for something for his dorm room when he starts at Northwestern next year. $1,800 for your dorm room? Wow. Man, that's, that's going to be a fancy dorm room, isn't it? Yeah. He'll be the guy with the fridge and the nice TV. Get and some good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Don't know how you rate this story, but we'll start with cute and go from there. This is Jesus Carrasco and his two chihuahuas from Wichita, Kansas. The dogs and Jesus love to ride the Harley, but like anything else, it's all about safety. The helmets come right off, and luckily I got, I got lucky enough that they ended up fitting their snouts. So some work did have to go into the helmets, like putting in another helmet in there and then creating a little nose shield. But yeah, they fit. <laughs> wow. Oh my goodness. Those are so cool. They look like human helmets. Aww. And he's got one in the front, one in the back on the, the I guess those are baby pouches he's got him in. Cute. Oh my goodness. Cute. Naturally, they've become an internet sensation, of course. Since Jesus and his wife just had a baby, the dogs a little starved for attention. So a motorcycle ride is always a good Aww. bonding moment to get the dogs a little, little fun. <laughs> <laughs> they need to be safe too. You yeah. almost wouldn't know that's a dog under there if you couldn't see the paws no. sticking right? out of the little carrier no. and, and, oh, and my its neck. But see that you saw the little baby there. Yeah, oh, I mean they, they need to be safe too, and I'm sure like oh, you know yeah. the, the bugs yeah. you know hit them as well. So yeah, Why living not? the high life with dad on the road. <laughs> Hogs and dogs. There yeah. you go. Hogs and dogs. All right. Thank, Thank you, David. <laughs> right now we're at 9:11, and we've now dropped to 37 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at nine. What's behind CPS's energy opening itself up for an outside review just weeks after approving a rate increase for customers? We'll find out. With gas prices rising, every cent matters. A look at local averages and how you can be sure you're getting the most gasoline for the lowest price still to come on GMSA. I tried this one out, Justin Horn. We're going from mutton busting to busting out in the mittens. Oh. That's perfect. That's actually very well done. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I applaud you. It took me about five seconds. <laughs> nice job. Nice work. Uh, it is mitten time. I would say that for sure, the way these temperatures are looking. Now, you look across the state, man, these, these are some chilly temperatures. Seven degrees in Amarillo, 
14 in Lubbock, 17 Wichita Falls, 28 Waco. We're sitting at 37, but I think we dropped down close to freezing by tonight. The warm stuff still down there around Brownsville at 77 in Brownsville, so a 70 degree difference from the southern tip of Texas to the Texas Panhandle. That's the way we roll in late February with these cold fronts. Uh, looking at uh, the wind chill values, it's negative 11. That's what it feels like in Amarillo right now. Negative 9, the wind chill in Oklahoma City. Feels like 27 here in San Antonio. Wind chills are going to be in the 20s most of today. There are winter weather advisories uh, posted across Central Texas and North Texas. Dallas dealing with some ice. They've had a few issues this morning, so if you're headed that way, be aware. And there is going to be more issues with the winter weather to our north. Now, could we see a little bit of freezing light drizzle here? Yes, but we think the impacts will be fairly minimal. We'll get into that here in just a second. You can see the heavy snow and ice mixing in there, Dallas to Oklahoma City. Our radar shows some light drizzle picking up here around San Antonio, so the roads are going to be damp. It's just that kind of uh, light, annoying mist or drizzle. That's what we're going to see most of the day. And then as you get into the hill country, that's when you start to see some of that pink color appearing. It is already below freezing in several spots there. But because we were so warm yesterday, a lot of this is uh, not, it's not going to form a lot of ice in the roads or anything like that. I think some street signs, maybe some tree limbs, you may start to see a little bit of ice up there in the hill country a little bit later this afternoon. So something to watch for. Outside right now, we've got a few drops there on live camp. 37 degrees at the airport, 42 Stinson, 38 Kelly, and 37 at Randolph. And those northerly winds are still howling 17 miles per hour. And that, of course, puts those wind chill values in the 20s. Uh, here are local temperatures, 38 in New Braunfels, 37 in Randolph. It's still 43 Pleasanton, but uh, below freezing in Comfort, 31 there, 30 in Kerrville, 27 Rock Springs. That's our cold spot this morning. Further south you go, the warmer the temperatures are, but these numbers will continue to drop throughout the day. Look at the 24-hour temperature change. We're down 29 degrees. When we show this graphic this afternoon, it will be even more extreme because yesterday we got up to 85. By this afternoon, I think temperatures will be in the low 30s here in San Antonio. So what a dramatic change with this cold front. And there's a look at the winds gusting now 25, close to 30 miles per hour. So these winds are fairly strong and there are the wind chills uh, with teens. That's what it feels like right now in places like Fredericksburg in Kerrville. And it probably gets a little bit worse before it gets better. Uh, forecast temperatures, we mentioned that we fall into the mid to low 30s this afternoon. 34 in San Antonio by 4 p.m. 29 Kerrville, 39 Uvalde, 42 down there in Catula. And then tonight, probably falling close to freezing here in town, 32. It will be below freezing in the hill country. And then tomorrow, a little bit of a warm up, but not much. 41 here in town, maybe a little bit of clearing out west, and that will push temperatures a little bit warmer there. Here's a look at the precipitation forecast. And by 4 p.m. today, we've still got some of that drizzle around and then some freezing drizzle in the hill country. And that continues into tonight. It may actually pick up a little bit, and this is a time frame where I do think we probably need to watch some of the elevated bridges and overpasses, especially the ones that aren't treated. There could be a few slick spots, but again, mainly it's going to be street signs and tree limbs, as we mentioned. And even here in Bear County, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a little bit of light freezing drizzle, especially across the northern part of the county. Tomorrow, the drizzle lets up. We just see some clouds, maybe, maybe a little bit of clearing late Thursday night, but not much. Clouds are going to stick around, honestly, through Saturday, and we have some chances of drizzle, showers, just overall damp and cold through Saturday before we finally get some clearing and things warm up Sunday and into early next week, guys. Oh my goodness, so we have to wait till Sunday for things to sort of warm up. Yeah, pretty much you have to wait till March. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll be patient. Thank you, Justin. <laughs> you got it. Can you be patient for yes, a few I more can. days? I can, I can take it. Thank you, Stephanie. 920, about 37 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, gas prices on the rise with no sign of stopping. How to make sure you're getting the best bang for your buck. And welcome back. It's 923. Gas prices expected to surge amid the ongoing situation at the Russian-Ukraine border. Here's a look at today's average prices according to GasBuddy.com. Locally, drivers are paying around $3. In Texas, the prices are around $3.20. But nationally, drivers are paying around $3.50. Experts say those prices are only expected to rise with no sign of slowing down anytime soon. ABC's Gio Benitez has some ways to try to keep your bills in check. 
With gas prices soaring, drivers are in sticker shock when they fill up their tanks. They're too high. It makes commuting difficult because who wants to pay that? I fill up my tank three times a week. I used to only put 60 and now I put about 100. Crazy, crazy gas prices. The pain at the pump is real. The average price per gallon is $3.53. That's the highest since 2014. And experts expect prices to keep rising. The national average is primed to hit that $4 a gallon mark. The only question is when. So with no relief in sight, there are some tricks to saving money the next time you need to fill up that tank. First, clean out the junk. Reducing the weight in your car makes it more fuel efficient. Think windshield fluid, extra tools, and personal effects. Another tip, use cruise control on the highways. The constant stopping and going could actually use more gas and cost you more. One study said cruise control can save about 20% of gas on highways alone. Another tip is buying gas earlier in the week. Approximately half of the states kind of followed those behaviors. That is, Monday was the cheapest and Thursday was the most expensive. Something else to consider? Big box stores like Costco and BJ's often offer some of the lowest prices. You can generally save the price of some of the membership charges that you'd pay with prices greatly lower than many stations around those retailers like Costco and BJ's and other big box stores, which generally try to bring in traffic by offering lower prices. Experts also say try to avoid filling up in downtown areas. Generally, prices are lower the further away you get from large population centers. And that's why oftentimes those highway travel stops, as long as there is more than one of them, can see and bring some of the lowest gas prices. And one of the easiest ways to save money is to actually make sure that you have the proper air pressure in your tires because so many people, they are driving around with less air in their tires than they should. So just go ahead and get yourself one of these little gauges. Use this as often as possible to check your air pressure and you'll save some gas and some cash. Gio Benitez, ABC News, Atlanta. 926, about 37 degrees. It's a lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. San Antonio Housing Authority planning to end their eviction moratorium soon. A look at what options are available for the thousands of families that will be left vulnerable. But first, Bear County authorities, including San Antonio Police, warning residents of an increase in vehicle burglaries in communities around our area. A look at some of the stolen items they've recovered and why it's so important to take things out of view in your car. And a quick check of the roads with Trans Sky. There's some spots there on our camera that we just passed. And looking at Highway 281 at Loop 410, things are moving there for now. We'll be right back. Top stories we're following today. A man fighting for his life following a shooting at a sports bar on San Antonio's east side. This all happened a little before 1230 this morning at JD Sports Bar on southeast Loop 410, not far from Rigsby's Avenue. Now, police say an argument started inside the bar and spilled out into the parking lot. And that's when one man pulled out and shot another male in the chest multiple times. The victim was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Uh, they fled the scene but were later detained by police. Well, San Antonio police are warning the community about vehicle burglaries. They are on the rise. The most common item stolen weapons. So thieves are targeting cars more often. And San Antonio police say property crimes rose more than 4% in 2021. In a four-week special operation between December and January, undercover police recovered $235,000 worth of stolen goods from San Antonio vehicles. One well, case, undercover officers resort, recovered 40 firearms, and they were able to make about 30 arrests connected to just burglarized vehicles. The thefts are pretty spread out across the area, but Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar says a lot of thefts happen in major parking lots uh, near restaurants, hotels, and retail stores. Other common items stolen soft and hard top Yeti coolers, high end cameras, and gaming devices. Police say the best way to avoid being targeted is by not leaving your valuables in your vehicle. Let's go outside with live cam. Temperature been dropping all morning long and we're not done yet, are we, Justin? It's still dropping. That wind is still gusty and it's going to be downright cold all day long. We're watching the radar too. Uh, light drizzle starting to show up here. Now, this is all really light. We, we turned the radar up a little bit to see it better, but some of these light uh, showery type uh, situations will continue through the next couple of hours. And in fact, even into tonight and early tomorrow. So it's just going to be sort of damp and cold. And you see some of the pink colors trying to show up there in parts of the hill country representing some light freezing drizzle. Temperatures are already cold enough for that to happen. Now impacts will be minimal as we've been saying 
maybe some of the uh, elevated services signs, those sort of things may develop a little bit of ice. So far, we think the roads will be okay, and I, I think TxDOT is treating some of the roadways just to be safe, some of those bridges and overpasses. 31 Comfort, 31 in Bandera, 31 in Boulevard, so below freezing there. Here in San Antonio, 37, and that transitions down into some 40s for Stinson and Pleasanton, even some 50s down around Catula. That cold air will make it to you, though, a little bit later this afternoon. Those gusty winds make it feel like it's 27 here in town, makes it feel like it's in the teens in the hill country. Very, very chilly morning. And the gusty winds, unfortunately, uh, kicked up Mountain Cedar today. It's in the moderate category. Just when we think Mountain Cedar season is over, here it comes again with these fronts continuing to come through. So just a heads up there. Forecast today, still uh, those numbers tumbling down into the low to mid or mid 30s, 34 degrees by 4 p.m. We're going to keep those light showers and drizzle in the forecast going into tonight, guys. Thank you, Justin. A quick look at the roads with TransSky looking there at Highway 90 at General McMullen. Things are moving there and looks like there's a stalled vehicle there at Loop 410 at Broadway, but things are still moving. Well, turning now to the pandemic, a slow decline in COVID cases in Bear County, but still another three people have died from the virus. Metro Health is also reporting 544 new cases. This morning, 469 COVID patients are in San Antonio area hospitals. 132 of them in our ICU, 65 are listed as actively being on ventilators. Throughout this pandemic, we have heard about housing concerns and in less than a week, the San Antonio Housing Authority's moratorium on evictions will be over. Yeah, that means more than 4,000 families in our area are vulnerable. Lee Waldman explains there are options to keep Saha residents from losing their homes. February 28th, that's the last day for San Antonio Housing Authority's eviction moratorium. I'm going to be living on faith real soon, like my job um, is coming to an end real soon. Many are wondering how they'll pay back past due rent, like Patricia, who's had to help her family deal with COVID cases multiple times, and she herself is dealing with complications from knee surgery. All I'm doing now is trying to focus and stay positive and pushing myself so I can get back to work so I don't have to keep looking for help out there. Since March 2020, before the federal eviction moratorium, Saha has given their attendants a break. That moratorium has been extended five times now but no more. We're trying to balance, um, you know, what the community is doing, uh, what other um, utility companies are doing. We said it's time. Across the city, almost $5 million in back rent is due. Saha's broken it down by district. District 2 and 8 lead the pack with $1.1 million and $880,000 owed respectively. I'm going to encourage people to not get too alarmed. Manny Pelias represents District 8. He wants to calm fears, assure people there won't be mass evictions at the end of the month. There will be a day where people are going to be expected to stay current with their rent. Um, and because what we got right now, not sustainable. Today, Saha worked alongside the city to help people pay for rental assistance. COO of Saha, Brandy Perez, says they don't want anyone to lose their homes. They'll help apply for assistance or start a repayment plan people just need to take the first step. Our goal is not to evict um, our families. Our goal is to keep them house, but they have to communicate. Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Well, CPS Energy is opening itself up for an outside review. This coming after some San Antonio City Council members called for an independent review of the utility in the lead up to a vote that approved a rate increase for customers. City Hall reporter Garrett Bernge looks at it and how independent it really is. From its financial health, to its customer engagement, to its organizational culture, CPS Energy has put out a request for proposal, or RFP, from outside groups that can come in to review five different areas of its operations. This is a big step right now, so All right, I'm excited. Council members Mario Bravo and Melissa Cabello Haverda had both pushed for outside audits of the utility using the rate increase vote in January to help extract some promises. I was able to meet with enough of the board members uh, and get buy-in on this that I felt very comfortable with it, and I'm glad that they're following through on it. Now they're keeping an eye on how CPS moves forward. I will hold them accountable for it because I'm being held accountable for it too. The CPS Board of Trustees, we the ones who issue the contracts for the outside reviews and get the reports. Staff will have a very limited role in reviewing the bids, the board vice chair says, but they will not have a say in the final reports. Their role, staff, is to provide input, not to influence the outcome of these 
uh, evaluations. But still, it amounts to CPS commissioning its own review. Right now, I, I don't have any qualms about it, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping eagle eyes on it, making sure that, that there aren't any missteps and there aren't any, um, we're not seeing any you know, kind of closing of the door. We need to keep it all out in the open. The board is expected to award the contracts for each of these sections by July 1st. Then the vendors will have 120 days to report directly back to the board. At CPS Energy, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. 937, now 36 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. AT&T has officially ended their 3G network, so what should you do if your device was running off of 3G? We'll explain your options next. 941, welcome back. Big technology changes happening that may render your phone and other devices obsolete. AT&T has officially shut down its 3G or third generation network and has been a couple years in the works and is making way for faster and better 5G. 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moritz on what it may mean for you and your devices. It's goodbye 3G. AT&T is the first telecom to hang up on the old technology. So if AT&T is your provider and you have an older phone, say pre-iPhone 6, don't expect to make calls or send a text. I think a lot of people are going to be caught off guard. Daryl Greer works with the nonprofit Older Adults Technology Services, and he's concerned for safety. We have a lot of older adults who are in the community who are using older phones. Tech savvy Pat Hasso has a new phone, but still, I have an iPad that I use just for playing and reading and, and nothing else. So it's not an up to date one. Sure enough, she got this message. Sorry, it's 3G, so no service. It's not just old cell phones that will be affected. It's any device that relies on the 3G network, such as some home security systems. The alarm will still sound but no one will be monitoring it. Then there are some medical alert systems. Possibly, you know, if somebody were to push that medical alert button, maybe they're not gonna connect to the people who need to. Same for older cars. Some systems like those that call for help in a crash won't connect. AT&T is the first to disconnect, but others will follow soon. Sprint will cut off its 3G in March, T-Mobile in July, and Verizon says by the end of the year. So if you have questions about whether your devices are affected by the 3G phase out, contact the companies that provide your service. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Might be important to check. Absolutely. 943 will drop down to 36 degrees so far. Where are we at wind chill wise, Justin? Oh, wow, yes. Feels like it's in the 20s right now. Mm -hmm. uh, the hill country feels like it's in the teens. And these numbers are going to get a little worse, guys, I think, as we go throughout the course of the afternoon. What a change from yesterday. Let's look at the time lapse first off. And you can see some of the, the light drizzle that continues to work through. And this is going to kind of be the, the setup today where it's cloudy for a little bit. Then some waves of drizzle come through right now. Just cloudy at the airport. 37 degrees. Northerly winds at 17 miles per hour. And that, again, puts wind chills in the 20s. 34 Canyon Lake. We are below freezing in places like Bernie Stage. Comfort, 31 degrees air. 30 in Kerrville. And as we zoom out some. Basically, the hill country is now falling into the 20s, and then that cold air is spilling south. So Carrizo Springs, Katua, yes, still in the 50s for now, but that won't be the case much longer. And there's a look at those wind gusts, gusting now close to 30 miles per hour here in town. Makes it feel so much worse. Wind chill values at 27. Currently here at uh, San Antonio, 27 is what it feels like in New Braunfels, and you've got wind chills in the teens. Rock Springs, Kerrville, up to Fredericksburg. The radar does show some of these uh, light areas of patchy drizzle working through and then you start to notice some of that pink color there on the radar that does indicate some light freezing drizzle and yes I think we could see some of that today now that the couple of things that we have working in our favor we mentioned this yesterday is that everything is very light first off secondly it was so warm yesterday that a lot of the roads are going to be just fine it will take them a long time to really cool off but signs uh, some tree limbs may collect a little bit of ice would not be surprised if that happens and maybe maybe some of the bridges and overpasses especially in the hill country will need to watch those those elevated surfaces here is the potential ice impacts as we go through uh, through thursday morning and this uh, does include the hill country we put that in a minor impact zone so just something to watch even northern bear county we'll have to keep an eye on that as well 
And as we zoom out, you'll notice places like Dallas, Oklahoma City. This is where the ice and the wintry weather could be a little bit worse. So if you're traveling, just know that as you go north, things are a little bit more dicey. Even today, Dallas reporting a little bit of ice and it is causing some issues there. And then some pretty heavy snow for places like Oklahoma City. A lot of cloud cover too. We've got that classic overrunning going on here with that cold air at the surface and then warm air over top of it. Current temperatures, it is 7 in Amarillo, 17 Wichita Falls, 25 in Dallas, 23 in San Angelo. It's in the teens in places like Midland. And then with those uh, wind chills, it, uh, it feels even worse. These wind chill values are pretty impressive. Negative 11 in Amarillo feels like negative 6 in Oklahoma City. So this cold air is going to sit here for a couple of days. It's actually will probably take until the weekend before we see some sort of significant warm up. Let's look at the forecast temperatures for today. And they don't change much, but they do fall into the mid 30s, probably by around 4 p.m. You'll see freezing temperatures for sure. We're already seeing that in the hill country, and that'll be the case tonight, too. Now, notice San Antonio falls down to 32. So that's where we get on that sort of dividing line and where we'll need to watch northern Bear County for some very, very light icing. Again, we think impacts will be fairly minimal. And then as we get into uh, tomorrow, a little bit of a warm up into the low 40s, but still cloudy and cool. I think Thursday night we could see some clearing, and I'll show you that here. This is 4 o'clock today. A little bit of drizzle, light freezing drizzle in the hill country. We'll continue to see that into tonight. This is 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Still seeing some of that precipitation. And then I think things wind down a little bit tomorrow afternoon. Still cloudy, but a lot of the precipitation goes away. And there's that clearing line. If we do get skies to clear Thursday night, temperatures could get pretty cold. But I really don't think that's going to happen. We're going to keep clouds in the forecast. So 41 Thursday, 41 Friday, still with a few light showers, and then rain chances pick up a little bit on Saturday. Still chilly, 43. It's not until Sunday that we finally get some clearing, and then next week things do warm up as we head into March, guys. Okay, we will wait patiently until Sunday. There you go. Thanks, Justin. And now moving to a health alert with this month, both Black History Month and American Heart Month. That's right. Heart disease, the leading cause of death in African-American women. And one woman is using her own valiant fight to raise awareness in her community. ABC's Robin Roberts. How's that story? I went on the bus and got my blood pressure done. They took blood work. On this sunny morning in Fort Worth, Texas, this mobile heart center is providing free health screenings. This is actually a disease that affects our community. It's very important for us to bring awareness to it. The Black Heart Association is bringing information and access. Our goal with the mobile bus is to make sure that we are wherever our people are. If that's at the car wash, the barbershop, the beauty shop, the church, wherever you are, that's where the bus can pull up to. Helping to prevent heart disease in the black community, especially among black women. As black women, we're always trying to be strong for everyone else. You can't take care of anybody else without taking care of yourself. In the United States, heart disease is the leading cause of death for African American women. Nearly half of all black women ages 20 and older have heart disease. Black Heart Association here. <laughs> if you're in the area, come out and let us bless you. Okay. Oh, yeah. The brains and heart behind this bus, 48-year-old Tara Robinson. For her, it's personal. When I was 40, I experienced three heart attacks over three days. According to Robinson, the first two landed her in the hospital. She says doctors were unsure what was happening. He says, hey, you're too young to be having a heart attack. It wasn't until her third, she says, that doctors were able to confirm that Tara was having a massive heart attack. I had 99% blockage in my main artery known as the Widowmaker. I was completely healthy as far as I knew. No high blood pressure, no cholesterol, nothing. But I was highly stressed. But now, looking back, she says the signs were there. My symptoms showed up months before my actual heart attacks. My left arm was numb, my neck was bothering me, fatigue. With her organization and partnership with the CDC in this year's Live to the Beat campaign, Tara's making it her mission to share her story and be a voice in her community. The reason God saved me is because I have to do this work. I'm the heart healer, mentally and physically. We want to help you. And that was ABC's Robin Roberts reporting. About 10 till 10, 36 degrees. Look at the roads with TransSky real quick. There's that shot again with some spots there at I-37. And here's I-37 at Jones where things are moving smoothly right now. We'll be right back. I don't know.
know if that necessarily qualifies as a lap dog, but um, it's sure, certainly making itself at home on Michelle's lap. So who's that? Any dog is a lap dog if you try. <laughs> so this is Mimsy. Um, Mimsy is one of our older babies that was recently brought over to us. Um, her previous owner was unfortunately not able to care for her any longer, um, but now she is with us. She's the sweetest thing. She is potty trained. Um, she gets along with other dogs. And as you can see, she isn't very comfortable being on furniture. So if that's okay in your house, she's ready to follow along with your rules. But then who <laughs> knows, she may get very uh, comfortable about taking up her space on the couch too. So <laughs> a little bit on the shy side, but look at those, those eyes are just like, give me a treat, yeah. you know. And she definitely comes out of her shell if you give her a little bit of time, mm -hmm. um, but she's just a little nervous. She's camera shy. Yeah, what y'all got going on? <laughs> um, well. You know, again, we're just reiterating that everyone is looking for a home right now. Um, and we have a ton of babies that are looking for homes just like Mimsy, who may be a little bit older and could be an amazing addition into your household. And so these babies, we have a lot of our diamonds. So those are our residents that have been with us for four months or longer. Mm -hmm. Their adoption fee is completely waived. Oh, really? And then for an adult dog, their adoption fee is just $60. Everyone is spayed or neutered, microchipped, up to date on all their vaccinations and preventions, receives every medical care that they need while they're with us and they just need to find their favorite family. And again, you adopt one, you actually help out too because that Absolutely. opens up room for another one. So, 11300 <laughs> Nacogdoches or the Paul Jolly Center across from the zoo, give them a jingle. There, those are, now she's perking oh, up. Yeah. <laughs> All right, one last look at the forecast. Uh, we'll see temperatures continue to fall today. 34 this afternoon, chances for drizzle continue. Some light freezing drizzle in the hill country possible today and it stays chilly basically through the first part of the weekend. All right, with uh, KSAT.com's health, we're going to take a healthy eating IQ test. Yes, I got five out of seven. I got five out of seven. He's, we've just sprung this on Justin, so <laughs> it's, a, on it. it's a pop quiz. So here it is. What is your healthy eating IQ? First one. All right, which foods contain carbohydrates? And the answer there is all of the above because some people okay. think that fruits and veggies what, don't have them. What percentage of healthy diet should come from proteins? And there are other percentages. It's 10 to 35 percent. All right. This is the first one. And what is protein made up of? Twinkies. Mm, I wish. <laughs> it's actually Why amino, is that not on there? Amino acids. Ami the good old amino acids. <laughs> okay. What does vitamin D contribute to? Us Big drinking goodness. more milk? Yes, better bone health. Darn it. I missed that one too. <laughs> and <laughs> of these options, what's the healthiest dressing choice for your salad? Blue cheese. Oh, it's we like wish. buttermilk ranch. Oh, it's the no, vinaigrette. It's Sorry. Italian vinaigrette. How do we get fiber into our bodies? Uh, I, that one I got wrong. I, I think I put unprocessed foods on that I one. I did too, but I think it was wrong. I think it's meat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or what was it? And true or false, sodium affects blood glucose. Oh, no, that's false. It, it does not. It does not, yeah. So I you don't need to take the quiz. We took it for you. <laughs> <laughs> but if you it, want to look at it, it's kpit.com. <laughs>